Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshek. Today is uh, Thursday, February 5th. This is our daily NBA show with Joe Duff from OffshoreInsiders.com. I was sick yesterday, so we didn't do it for Wednesday, but we're back today. Joe Duffy, thanks for being back with us. Thank you, Peter. As you can see, I'm looking more handsome than ever today. <laughs> Joe Duffy, uh, we had a crappy day on Tuesday. It's all right. We're still both positive for the year. Me just slightly, you a little bit more than slightly, but, uh, you know, we got to pick it up now, okay? You, you got it, no problem. All right, before we get to the four, ga the four game card today, uh, give a plug for offshoreinsiders.com because for you, of course, the most important thing is how you're doing at your site with your premium picks, not your uh, free play picks in this show, although you care about these as well. How's everything going at offshoreinsiders.com? Very well, and in fact, tonight's Sunbelt Game of the Year among six winners, which all in college basketball, which for a weeknight is a ton. Offshoreinsiders.com, Joe Duffy's picks, baby. I think I'm seeing two things that I'm thinking about. The first one is um, I'm thinking about maybe the under in Clippers and Cleveland, right? It's a high total, 207.5 or 208. And, uh, you know, the Clippers, J.J. Redick is out, and, uh, you know, they've been, uh, uh, you know, a little bit off on offense recently, so I figure they're probably going to clamp down on defense at least a bit to uh, limit Cleveland here. Uh, you know, the Clippers have gone under in five of their last six. Cavs, six straight unders, so I don't like to ride those waves, you know, just blindly, but it's a high total. What do you think about the under in Clippers Cleveland? Yeah, that's a very interesting play. I didn't really touch that game as far as either the side or the total. Both teams have been doing pretty well on both ends of the court. The Clippers have the third best net rating in the NBA in their last five games. It's been the, the fourth uh, or the, the third best over the last five games and the fourth best over the last 15 at plus 8.1. But Cleveland has been playing much better as of late with the fourth best nest, uh, net rating sh short term at plus 10.2. So that does usually mean that they're being intense at both ends of the court, but especially on the defensive end. Remember, that's one of my golden rules. Intensity shows up more so on the defensive end than the offensive end, so I'd probably lean towards agreeing with you. All right. I'll take I'll take a shot with the under. Right now, 208 is uh, one of the market-wide numbers, and then I'm also thinking it's a little bit uh, maybe uh, out of left field, but I'm thinking about Phoenix plus four and a half. You know, Portland uh, ha is having their worst stretch of the season right now. They're two and nine against the spread over the last 11. Phoenix hasn't been good either, though. Two and five against the spread over their last seven, but uh, I'm just figuring that I can easily see this one going down to the wire. Uh, you know, Phoenix uh, has been pretty good on the road against the spread, I think, although I don't have their number here. I'm just thinking that with how bad Portland is playing, how bad they've been against the spread, giving that many points to a road team, maybe Phoenix plus four and a half. What do you think, Joe? Well, it's quite interesting that my play for today happens to be on that game. It's not on the side, but on the total. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the Phoenix, they've certainly been regressing as far as offensive efficiency. They've got the 11th worst offensive efficiency in their last five games which is you know pretty pretty significant for a low total obviously the 11th worst offensive efficiency in the NBA isn't horrific but when you consider how high the total is um, I definitely like the under now granted Phoenix still plays a very up tempo last three games they've got the third quickest pace in the NBA and the second quickest in the last 15 but the Suns are regressing to the mean. They've been a big under team as of late, as they used to be one of the top over teams. That so they've gone under five straight, including right. twice by at least, um, or including the last three times or twice over the last five games, they've gone under by at least 20 points. So they become an under team as of late. I don't really have a strong play on the side, but we're both agreeing on that game. I actually like the under there. All right, right now 212 is a. Uh a market number widely available and yeah Portland is 8 and 17 over under at home all right so I think I'll, I'll hold off for Phoenix for now so I'm going to take uh, Clippers Cleveland under 208 you're going to take Phoenix Portland under 212 and then one other game that just looks interesting you know Dallas is a small road favorite at Sacramento you know they're playing on a back-to-back -back, but they're coming off a game where you know they got kind of embarrassed on national TV now they're going back the next night playing a relatively weak team in Sacramento Sacramento 9 and 15 against the spread at home Dallas has been good uh, on the road it's a small number you think uh, Dallas is in a, a good bounce back situation here and because they're playing on a back-to-back -back and didn't play that well last night that uh, maybe that's why the line's a little bit low well it's quite interesting that when I checked I was compiling the notes a little bit earlier Dallas was one of the stronger public plays mm -hmm. this oh, year okay. and as a general rule of thumb 
you know, I'm, I'm a big contrarian guy and I've done videos and written articles why contrarian plays do work, but that would make me a little bit nervous. Yes, it looks like the overwhelming majority of the public, based on a couple of the metrics I use, they're, they're flat out in love with Dallas, but Dallas, as you said, they are playing not only back-to-back, -back, but three games in four days. They're going to be without Rajon Rondo again. They're 0-2 minus him. And, you know, remember one of my golden rules that if anything, teams can rally around adversity short-term, but usually the second or the third game without a key player is when they really start to drop and Dallas hadn't played all that well without uh, Rondo as far as cover wise so yeah I, you know but especially with the public loving Dallas mm -hmm. that would make me a little bit nervous but uh, but yeah I, if anything I'd probably go with Sacramento just because I've had some success with contrarian plays and this looks like it's been one of the stronger public plays in a while so now I, I, I would probably lean towards Sacramento there. Interesting thoughts. Joe Davi from OffshoreInsiders.com with six top plays in college basketball tonight. His free pick is going to be under 212 in Phoenix, Portland. I'm going to go with under 208 in Clippers, Cleveland, and I'll talk to you tomorrow, Joe.